Welcome to Dig Deep, the mining podcast. In this podcast, we go deep into mining news, hot topics, and live interviews with mining professionals and leading figures in the mining industry. Introducing your host, Rob Tyson, founder and director of Mining International and Mining International Executive, a leading global mining recruitment and headhunting agency. Hi, mining community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the mining podcast. And today's guest is Nick, uh, Nicola Galloway Warlord, who is the managing director of Thor Energy, who are an exploration company with a focus on uranium and energy metals that are crucial in the shift to a green energy economy. Um, Thor is a number of highly prospective projects that give shareholder uh, shareholders exposure to uranium, nickel, copper, lithium, and gold in both Australia and the US. Uh, Nicola has more than 25 years experience in mining and exploration in in Australia, Eastern Europe and South America. And her her experience spans from grassroots exploration to projects evaluation um, in open cut and underground mining. Sorry, (laughs) with a focus um, on gold, copper, nickel, uranium and lithium. Um, Nika is also a director of the Australian Institute of Geosciences, um, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about Thor Energy, um, the rare earths and energy sectors, um, and what the outlook of the company is in, in these uh, commodities and jurisdictions. So that's welcome, Nika, to the podcast. How are you doing, Nika? Great, well, thanks, Rob. Appreciate your time. Uh, I know you're over from Australia and probably in uh, in the UK. And we did comment uh, about how dark it is getting, uh, how dark it is early. So appreciate you uh, taking your time uh, to uh, record a podcast with us. So as we always start these podcasts off, I just wonder if you can just tell us a little bit about your career, about your background, uh, maybe from when you graduated to sort of present day. Yeah, so I'm a geologist. Um, You did give a a little bit of my bio. So I've been in the industry for about 30 years um, and I've been very blessed to work um, across the sector. So working in greenfields exploration through to mining um, with a few career highlights working in Eastern Europe, South America um, and now working in the US. So I've been able to blend, I suppose, my geological journey with my passion for the travel um, and, you know, what's uh, um, very, I suppose, good is the fact that I've started 30 years ago and I still love it as much today as I did back then. So I've been very fortunate to have a career that I've been able to grow with um, and, you know, accommodate family, life, um, balance, etc. and still passionate today. That's good to hear. So I just wanted to just give us a, an overview of uh, Thor Energy. Yeah, so I joined Thor Energy um, approximately two years ago um, and sort of uh, taken it on a little bit of a different journey. So uh, a little bit of a different corporate uh, focus, if you like. Um, We had a name change um, from Thor Mine to Thor Energy to really reflect our strategic direction in the uranium and energy space side of things. So our key projects over in the US, so uh, Utah, Colorado, um, and that's where our, our focus is at the moment. Um, we're currently drilling over there. Um, but then we have assets in Australia. So we have a copper rare earth project in South Australia, as well as a gold copper project over in the Pilbara uh, WA. So a little bit of a diverse portfolio, but very much focused on uranium and energy metals. Obviously, you mentioned that you've uh, re- uh, joined the company uh, a couple of years ago. Just wonder if you can just share some of the insights into, uh, obviously, your journey um, journey with uh, Thor Energy. Um, what are some of the milestones that's led you uh, within this uh, position? Um, and some, of the, I suppose, some of the leadership qualities that you've, I suppose, gained over your career uh, that has brought you to the company. Yeah, well, I think whenever there's a change of management, um, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. So you come in with fresh ideas, um, your own sort of um, stance on things. Um, you know, I obviously want to uh, give shareholder value uh, and return. And I suppose bringing my skill set to the team, that's where there was a uranium project within the portfolio. Um, and I worked um, in the uranium space from 2004 to 2011. 
and was involved in a, a uranium discovery in South Australia. So when I saw that asset, I felt that I had the right skill set to really take that forward. Um, and our other two directors also have uranium backgrounds. So again, I was able to you know, um, combine our skill sets um, and really focus that corporate strategy to suit um, the skill sets. Um, I think, you know, having worked in the industry for such a long time, I've obviously um, seen some highs and lows and, you know, hopefully I can bring some positive, um, you know, skills to the team and, and drive the projects forward. Obviously, you mentioned, uh, gave us a quick overview of the projects that you're involved in. Uh, I just wonder if there was any uh, projects you want to highlight to us and the audience. Yeah, I think that uh, the key one is our Wedding Bell Radium Mountain projects in Colorado. Um, they're in the Eurovan Mineral Belt. Um, it's a very interesting um, area to work in. It was extensively mined um, through the 20th century um, and very high grade. Um, and it really ceased mining in the 1960s due to the uranium price sort of falling back then. So, so coming back into that area, it's steeped in history. The community really want to see the projects going forward. So we have a really good community engagement um, with the locals as well as the, the broader sort of uh, government um, stakeholders. But I think that's a project that um, has a lot of uh, growth. So growth through drilling campaigns, um, and potentially resource reserve um, generation. It's very close to one and only licensed uranium um, milling um, processing facility in the US. So that's at Blanding in Utah. Um, so again, it's got um, the potential to really grow from not only the geological, the mining, but also the processing side of things. Um, and, you know, it's just a, a great jurisdiction to work in. There's no sovereign risk. Um, the government has a very clear process for its permitting, so it's a very um, favourable jurisdiction to be in at the moment. Why did Thor Energy change its strategic vision uh, to a new um, new green economy um, and obviously focus on uranium and radium in the US? Look, um, when I joined, we had a very diverse portfolio of projects and, you know, sometimes as a junior that can be just too many. So, you know, you don't have the funds, you don't have the workforce to really work on each of the projects. So I felt it was important that we narrow our focus. And that's where I looked at my skill sets and the other director's skill sets. And that's where the uranium project sort of stood out. Um, so that was one side of things. The other side is obviously, you know, uranium um, nuclear power at the moment is really at, um, you know, a, a very favourable position. Um, so, again, that sort of helped with that strategic focus in on the uranium and energy metals. Um, obviously, even though you're predominantly um, focused on uranium assets, as you mentioned, in the US, um, you still have strategic metals assets in Australia. Um, and re re uh, recently announced a collaboration with uh, Fleet Space Technologies um, to assist with your copper project in Alfred East. Um, how did that come about and what are you looking to achieve with that partnership? Look, it, it came about um, mainly through networking. Um, Fleet Space Technology wanted to collaborate um, with a company and they felt very confident with our geological expertise. So it made um, a nice sort of merger that they bring their um, exosphere technology into our exploration to accelerate exploration and take it to that next level. So, yeah, I'm really excited about this partnership. Um, we're currently doing some geophysical surveys, so what's called ambient noise tomography, which measures the natural vibrations in the Earth's surface. And then they will take that information, um, utilise our geological data set, um, and using AI and machine learning, um, basically remodel the data. Um, so really looking forward to that. Um, by doing this sort of modelling work, it um, will hopefully define the structural uh, belt that the uranium, sorry, that the copper sits in, and this will minimise the amount of drill holes required. So we see it as an environmental step forward as well as um, a geological step forward. And with uh, this Alfred East project, um, there's evidence of rare earth elements. Um, 
what does that mean for thor energy um and how does uh this rare earth discovery compare to that of some of your peers yeah so look we were originally focused on the copper oxide mineralization um, and then when we started processing the data and really starting to understand the copper mineralization itself um, that's when we discovered the uh, rare earths associated with the copper mineralization um, and very good uh, rare earth intercepts so um, up to 2000 um, ppm total rare earth oxides and this is very much um, you know, favorable in, in comparison to our peers. The other thing that's what's good with the rare earths is the magnet component. So what's referred to as the magnet rare earth oxides and our mineralization has about 35% of this magnet rare earth. So um, look, it's, it's a copper project by all means, but if we can recover the rare earths with the copper, um, then this is a bit of a game changer for the project. I just wonder if you can elaborate on uh, Thor Energy's uh, commitment to the company's environmental sustainability um, and what specific measures um, or practices does the company employ to minimise its environmental impact uh, in its operations? Look, our ESG strategy is obviously paramount. Um, so the environment, um, community engagement, as well as, as governance, um, from the environmental side of things, I think my philosophy is always around best practice and continuous improvement. Um, so, you know, with our Alfred East project, so that's the Copper Rare Earth project, we're looking at using in situ recovery, which is an environmentally friendly alternative to traditional open cut and underground mining. So looking at ways that we can do things um, with a more environmental and sustainable um, method or technique, shall I say. Over in the US, um, where we're currently drilling, um, just little things. So with our reclamation work, we're working with the local environmentalists and horticulturalists to come up with a, a seed mix after our drilling. Um, and what we used last year, we've actually improved on and we're using... Um, a new seed mix, which um, is very much targeted at certain um, animals in the area. So really trying to work with the local communities to um, help reduce our environmental footprint um, and sustainability. In terms of uh, community engagement and social responsibility, uh, what initiatives or projects is Thor Energy involved in and, and what benefits to the local community, uh, both in the US and in Australia? Um, and how does the company prioritise and support its social development uh, in the surrounding areas? Um, look, uh, social licence is um, key to the success of any project. So if you don't have a positive social engagement, um, you know, it could be critical to the success of the project. So the key is to engage with the community very early on. You want to inform them. Um, involve them and collaborate with them, you know, throughout the journey of the project. So certainly in the US, we've um, been working with the community. I've had many, um, what I call meet and greet sessions. So, um, you know, just at the community hall doing coffee mornings to sort of meet people, talk about what we're doing, um, allow the community to give us feedback, um, to make comments um, in order to get them involved and collaborate with us. Obviously, we sponsor a few of the, the local events. So, um, you know, whether that be sporting things, whether it be um, the last one we did was a, a burrow race, which is the small donkeys, um, which played a critical role in mining back in um, the heyday. So, again, you know, just getting involved in some of the, the local sort of community events, um, that's really important. And then over in Australia, doing similar things. So making sure that the, the key stakeholders are informed on what we're doing and you know, allowing them to, to have a say in the project and how it moves forward. What are some of the challenges you're facing in both uh, Australia and the US? Uh, some of the are some of the challenges similar or are they different because they're obviously in different countries? Look, I think, you know, on a micro uh, scale, there's some differences, but generally speaking, they're the same. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily challenges, but obviously, you know, as we talked about the environment, the community engagement, governance, these all take time. Um, and that's something, you know, that it's very hard to 
um, communicate that necessarily to the shareholders, um, but it's necessary. If you don't um, take those steps, then you risk the success of the project. So, you know, sometimes community engagement, you know, can take some time. You know, it's not something that one cup of tea solves all your issues. So you do need to allow, you know, flexibility um, and time to sort of involve the community and your stakeholders. But essentially, the US and Australia are very similar. Um, you know, little things are different, but generally speaking, um, you know, it's making sure you involve and collaborate with the community and the key stakeholders. Obviously, as the, the CEO, how do you assess the, the current market conditions for uh, copper and uranium? Um, and what, what sort of trends or opportunities do you foresee uh, for the market in the, uh, in the near term? and long-term future? Well, as I've, I highlighted at the beginning, I am a geologist, so I suppose sometimes I have to take that step back from technical and look at the corporate side of things and look at how the commodities are, are you know, um, trending. And so that's something that I do a lot more of these days. What's exciting um, with the uranium sector is we're sitting at a um, 30, well, 73 um, US dollars per pound. And this is sitting at about 52% high this year and a 12 year high. Um, so I feel we're at the start of that sort of bull market um, with very good favorable fundamentals. So good supply demand. We're in a very good um, jurisdiction, no sovereign risk. So there's, they're the sort of things that you monitor. Um, you also look at who are the players in your neighborhood um, and what is the, um, you know, the flow through to mining and, and milling. Um, and then the outlook for offtake agreements or purchases. So although we're at early days, you still need to look at the, the bigger picture. Um, copper's obviously um, fluctuating a little bit more on the, the price. I think it's about um, $3.73 um, US per pound. Um, but again, the you know, with electrification, renewables, um, there's, again, good, favourable supply demand fundamentals. So, you know, it's something that I monitor very regularly. It's obviously getting out and networking with people as well, um, you know, looking at the big picture and, um, you know, following um, the different trends, different prices, looking at the charts um, and what's going on globally. And lastly, uh, what's the outlook for, for, for energy over the sort of next... Uh, six to 12 months? Um, look, I think as I, I, I believe I've highlighted, we're currently drilling over in the US. So we're undertaking a 4,000 metre RC drilling program. Um, so on the ground at Wedding Bell and Radium Mountain. So there's going to be quite a bit of news flow out of that project. Um, with uranium drilling, you get to do downhole gamma. So it's something that we can release uh, throughout the program. And then at the end of the program, we'll have assay results coming out as well. So quite a bit of news flow on that uranium project. And then over in Australia with our Alfred East project, we should start to see some results from the geophysics surveys that Fleet have um, undertaken um, and then ultimately the new revised 3D model. So I think quite a lot of news flow over um, the next few months. Um, uh, yeah, a good time to, to be sort of out in the, on the ground exploring um, with lots of news flow coming through. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much for your, your time, Nicola. Um, appreciate you obviously giving us an update on Thor Energy. Um, if our audience wants to reach out to you, if they've got any questions, if they want to follow your story, how can they go about doing that? What sort of social media uh, channels are you on? So that they can contact um, our website, so um, thorenergyplc.com. Um, our AIM ticket is THR, so on um, the AIM market. But um, we are on LinkedIn and uh, I was going to say Twitter, but it's no longer Twitter, X. Um, so, yeah, so most of the social media channels um, they can follow. But certainly on the website, um, my email's there and they can contact me direct if they'd like. Yeah, great. We'll include those in the show notes accompanying this anyway uh, for easy access. So really appreciate your time. Uh, perhaps you want to come on uh, sometime next year and give us an update on some of the uh, projects that you're involved in. Yeah, love to. Thanks, Rob. I really yeah. appreciate your time. No worries. Thank you. Um, thank you for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please, as always, keep sharing these episodes 
uh, not just amongst people within our industry, but also people outside of our industry. Um, as obviously Nicola has highlighted, they are in the in Australia and the US. So please keep sharing this episode and this particular episode to people within the US and Australia. Um, so people are aware of what Thor Energy are up to. Um, and please obviously uh, follow their story. So until next time, happy mining. Thank you for listening. Remember to reach out to Rob via the show notes and be sure to subscribe and leave a review. Until next time, happy mining, helping each other to improve the mining industry.